mailbag time again. Let's see what I've got this time. I've got about eight packages here, I think. Should be something interesting in here. Stick around. These are keyring parts. So I discovered these at Bunnings and they had these in the area where they do the key cutting where they you know cut new keys. And I was like, I got one of those and it looked alright and they seemed okay. And it's basically just a little bit of wire with a little coupling on the end. And you can just put this through the hole in the key and you just loop it around and then do it up. And you've got this nice, quite robust little link. They're quite expensive, I think it was about five dollars for one or something. I thought that's a bit much. Anyway, I made a little look on AliExpress and I discovered I can get these for much, much less directly from China. They look exactly the same. My plan for these is actually use them for bits of test gear. If you've got like calibration keys, stuff like that, you can put the calibration key on this and then attach it to the instrument. You could like loop this through a handle or something like that. Gives you a bit more options. So I thought I'd get a bunch of them because they're cheap to from China. Don't forget to like the video if you like Marlboro videos and also subscribe if you uh, haven't come across my channel before. Get the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. This is a iPhone flex cable of some kind, which is, well actually there's two of them in there. These took a while to arrive. These actually took six months to arrive. All of these ages ago I ended up buying replacements, which then arrived. I think these are used ones as well, but it's probably not too worried about that. So these are the volume and mute buttons from an iPhone 6. I believe that's what they were for. See so it's got a shaping in the flex there and it's all preformed. These are used flexes. But to be honest, I don't really care about being used because that means Apple original parts, Apple original parts, reasonable quality rather than some aftermarket thing you really don't know whether it's any good or not. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. And it's already got the brackets for the switches and stuff on there as well. So, yeah. I bought these because I was repairing an iPhone 6 for someone it, after, I think, two months I gave up waiting and purchased some other ones from somewhere else. <laughs> so, these are all the original ones. They finally arrived. And I think I actually got refunded for these because they didn't turn up at the time. Anyway, looks like they finally made it. So some more adapters. This is a BNC to SMC. Yes, BNC to SMC adapter. That's an SMC here. And we've got male and female adapters. All did these a while ago now, probably two months, I suppose. Yeah, that screws on there nicely. Yeah, this took a little while. I've had a whole bunch of other ones which arrived, which I've shown in previous mailbags. And also got some SMA to SMC adapters in here as well. Yeah, that's those ones. There's the SMC side and that's the SMA side. And these are the BNC to SMC, male and females. Which one's actually male, which one's female, I'm not actually sure, I need to define them, but anyway, there's the other type there. So as I mentioned previously, multiple times when I've done these videos with adapters which turned up, these were for the Rakko Dana 2101 frequency account that I was repairing. I didn't actually have any hookups for that particular connection style. I didn't have any SMCs. I had SMAs, SMBs. Didn't have any SMCs. And it was the first time I came across them. So I kind of went a bit overboard buying a whole bunch of different SMC adapters. So if I get in that situation again, at least I'll have one. I'll probably find now there's an SMD adapter. <laughs> um, yeah. You almost guarantee it, can't you? What are these? What does that say? Can you see what it says? Is that 78L05 is it or something? 79L05? I can't quite see what that says. Yep, yeah, that is indeed a 78L05. So that's PK78L05. So these are linear voltage regulars. I don't remember why I bought those. I really don't remember. Hmm. Oh well, I've got them now. What is this? Ah! Ooh, this is promising. 
This is more like it. Now, I purchased displays previously from this guy. I think it was just from the same person. I had issues with them arriving broken because they weren't actually packaged properly. These are some 3.5 inch TFT LCD displays. Only this time they package really well. So, but just because the package are, I'm not going to assume they're not broken. So let's open these up and check them. Let's just slide this out and let's have a little look. Make sure it isn't broken. Shouldn't be with that packaging, but you never know. Peel this back. Looks fine. Let's put the pack in, put that back on again. Don't even get too excited now, do we? We'll check the other one. Yep, yeah, no cracks. Excellent. So these are really good displays to have. These are used in a few different projects as well, like open source things too. And a good example of that is Dustin Watts, who's got a free touch deck project. And I actually built one, but my current issue is that my computer, my Bluetooth is not the right type of Bluetooth for it, so it doesn't actually work. Yeah, that happens. Well, I've got ways around that, I just have to use the right kind of Bluetooth dongle. Not worried. Anyway, actually, I might show you it. Give me one second. So let's plug this in. I've got this ridiculously long USB cable in here, because what I use for doing my development stuff. Let's plug that in. Here you go. So this is Dustin Watts Touchdown. I've already programmed this one for my configuration. Um, it's all in there, you know, various settings and brightness settings and stuff like that. Now this is actually based on one of my own boards. So I've still got the potato on the screen, so it's probably not the best view. But this is my LoRa module board. And I, because I already have this module, well this board, which interfaces between a 2.5 inch TFT and an ESP32, that's what I used. You can actually use Dustin Watts's own PCB design. He does it, make the files available so you can download your own board and get them made yourself. His own version. Mine required a few modifications to allow for my board, but it's basically very, very similar. So that is basically working. The problem I've got is that uh, my computer isn't compatible with it, as it turns out. No, like I said, I'm going to work around that problem. But that's the touch stick. Right, free touch stick. Open source. You can get the code off from GitHub and it's all there. I wanted to build one of them. Anyway. Getting slightly distracted. These screens are very handy things to have. That board there is my LoRa to Wi-Fi gateway. I've used that in some projects, and that's why I've got it based on that. And I actually had one which blew up. I did a post, community post on it or something like that, or Twitter thing, and it blew up. And this is the screen which blew up. I had a problem with um, the buck converter to short it out, and so it passed the input voltage right through to the output, which it turns out five volt devices really don't like having 24 volts shoved through them. Who would have thought? Anyway, more displays, because you always need displays. And it's good to have a little stock of these things, so when you do make a little project, you can just get one out and make it. You don't have to worry about it. Like this thing here, I threw that together using bits and pieces I'd around. Because I had all the bits and pieces laying around. All in mailbags too. All the moving featured in mailbags. See if we links for these items down below. Don't forget that. At least links to everything I can give you a link for. Oh, it's another one of these mounts. Okay. So I got a bit carried away. When my wife's phone mount broke for her car, um, I went shopping for some different ones and I thought I'd get a few different types and just sort of see what's out there and compare them and see what functions okay, what doesn't. It's got like little feet which fold out. It's a latching one of it. Yep, it's a latching one, so you just push it in. Keep it in the same spot. It's got a foam in the back there. Lock, unlock. So you can lock it so it doesn't. Bet anymore, is it? No? I don't know. It's like a lock and unlock thing on the back here. It doesn't seem to do much. Maybe it's rotation lock. Maybe. So we've got a support mount. We've got a main window mount, which has got some kind of bendy arm. So you stick that on the window. And you can then rest this on your dashboard. Stick that into it, it gives you quite a good bracing actually. That'd be all like that was sitting on your dashboard. That goes on the end. Try and pop it on. A bit of a challenge to get. Ah, there you go. That's why it doesn't want to go through the nut even. Alright, do it again. So there's that, and then we've got this mount here. This actual pattern they've got on here, this like four leg pattern, I've seen that on a lot of different phone holders. So it's 
quite lightly actually you could probably adapt an existing one um, if they're all common at least they're all the same that's the wrong way up I'm just going to go that way that's not locking in here we go that's locked in okay you've got this lock thing here so this is if I lock that nut in there it's rotational bit if I push the lock down Oh no, here we go, yep, lock, rotation lock, it does lock it in certain positions. Okay, maybe handy. See, this is quite a long one, so if you've got a, a deep windscreen, but your dashboard is nearby to where you want it, you could use this. It's got potential. Because say, a lot of phone holders are only quite short. The other one I got my wife is probably about that long, and it's just okay for her car. This might actually be quite good for my car because my windscreen is again quite a long way away and uh, having this brace here means it's um, not the swing off the end of an arm. You have a, this that stuff for the windscreen and this is flapping around you'll see that it will just wobble around you get little bumps it will just wiggle like that and this is irritating. But having that mount there means you can rest it on the dashboard and it helps support it and keep it stable. And again not very expensive and probably not that interesting either. Ooh. That's interesting, there's two things in that bag. It's just like a bonus mail bag, you get extra packages. <laughs> right, let's get in here. It's quite surprising, it's the first time I've had that. What do you have in here? These are some 30 pin ESP32 modules. The same as I used in my free touch deck. ESP32 room. 32. These are the modules I use. I've got a footprint I designed for these things for um, my projects and I just plug these things in and use them. It's dead easy. I do have a modification I'll do to these units though and that is to actually link a capacitor between the enable pin and the ground pin of these things and that means you don't have to push a button each time you want to program it and just program it and it works. It's a bit of an oversight I think on this design where they don't have a capacitor there. The one microfarad literally capacitor works perfectly fine. Right, let's see what's in this bonus package. Was well, the other one a bonus package? I don't know. Which one of them's a bonus package? I'm not sure which one's. But... <laughs> this one's a bit squashed at one end. Now that is interesting. Why were they bundled up together? That's really curious because they're different suppliers. Anyway, these are some Laurel modules. So this is the. E32 868T30D, I've shown this previously in the mailbag, and also the 868T20D. These are 1 watt modules, these are 100 milliwatt modules. And these are really good for my projects that I build. Um, I don't have a particular use for these right now, I'm just replacing ones which blew up recently, so because of that buck converter failure I mentioned before, just for stock. You'll get them where you can and keep a stock of them, because one day you won't be get these anymore and you'll be reliant on them. Well, what this is? I can't seem to find a seam in the box, so I'm going to have to just hack into it, I think, and just see what happens. What's that one there? Let's get one there. Let's go for that. Here we go. As we guess. So I purchased some of these Kimtac wipes a while ago. I just bought one box because I wanted to try them out and see what I thought of them and see how good they were. And I've been really happy with them. These were recommended to me by one of my subscribers. I forget who it was now. David was it? David V? I can't remember. You know who you are anyway. And so I got them and tried them. And I thought, right, they're working alright. So I'll get myself some more. I'm lucky I'll get them all out. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So four boxes of Comtech wipes. 28 sheets of box. So there's over a thousand sheets here, plus the one I've already got, which is over there. Sneaked away in the corner. So I now have enough to last me a while. I recommend you get some of these too, they work really well if you do a lot of desoldering and resoldering work, rework, I should say. They work great for getting flux off the boards with a bit of alcohol. They work really well. Quite tough, lint free, they work alright. Put links for these down below. Like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribe. Click the bell icon thing, the little bell thing, you know, the, the, the thing for notifications. If you don't click that, you won't get notified. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.
Check out the videos at the end. Got black dot there again. How's it always happen?